This is Twit. You uh, you were at the event for the 5700 and the 5700 XT. Did they live yes. up to our prediction, sir? Well, the most interesting thing to me about them, and it it gets kind of murky if we start talking about architecture, like the actual nuts and bolts of mm -hmm. how the graphics subsystem works. But a lot of what we were doing at the event I was just attending was learning about the new architecture. And that was the big point was that this is a new architecture. So for the last seven years, AMD has been using something called graphics core next as the graphics architecture for all of their GPUs. So GCN is the abbreviation. Graphics Core Next is in workstation GPUs. It's in their all of their Radeon products. And it's 12 years old at this point. It was introduced with those 7,000 series cards. Uh, I believe it was the 7970 right. was the initial GCN architecture card. So that back in 2012. And so it has shown its age. They've done as much as they could with it. They've refined it. They've reduced latency, they've done what they can, and the ultimate expression of what you could do with GCN was the Radeon 7 for gaming, which obviously by coupling it with an extra two channels of high bandwidth memory two, they took the memory bandwidth to just ridiculous levels, one terabyte per second of throughput, and yet the core, the GCN core, was still limited to a total of 64 compute units for a a total of 4,096 streaming processors. So without further refining or improving the architecture within the limits of 64 ECUs, you know, you were kind of stuck. And they, they got additional clock speed out of it by focusing more on that than on power savings with Radeon 7. So it was still a 300 watt part, but with the same 64 CUs as Vega 64, far better performance. It, there's not even, it's not even close. At the same wattage, a Radeon 7 wipes the floor with a Vega 64. So right. that being said, GCN, which was basically built for high bandwidth memory, at least in these this last few generations of it, Navi is different. Navi is not based on uh, high bandwidth memory. It's based on regular GDDR memory. So GDDR6 is what this was built for. They're using fast GDDR6, the equivalent speed, 14 gigabit per second speed that NVIDIA uses for the GTX or the RTX uh, 2080, 26 or 2070. And that means with a 256 bit wide memory bus, they are getting 448 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, which is basically what that first HBM product that they had on the graphics core next architecture could do. I think it was the Radeon Fury X. So G GDDR memory is finally fast enough that they're getting that sort of original dream of ultra high bandwidth memory without having to build a platform for HBM, which is more expensive. So these first products that were going to be announced, which was the 5000 series or 5700 series family of GPUs, we knew they were going to be on Na Navi and what we learned was the architecture internally and what they were telling us is actually called RDNA. That's the new architecture. So GCN is out, RDNA is in. There's a bunch of new features, some really interesting stuff coming in the Radeon software that everybody with one of these Navi cards will be able to take advantage of, like, you know, zero performance hit, uh, enhancement to sharpness when you're upscaling, if you're using GPU scaling from a lower resolution to a higher resolution, which is a, a something I'm looking forward to because I, I am like a lot of people where if you buy a 4K display, you want a really high resolution display and you can't really play your game at a, an acceptable frame rate at 4K with all your high detail settings, you might play at a lower resolution. So they were showing things like that, like the new Unity engine has this built in where it does this intelligent upscaling with sharpening, which and they were kind of making fun of NVIDIA with DLSS by saying, you know, our upscaling technology actually sharpens the image instead of making it look softer. And they were showing like side by side comparisons and there was a lot of snickering. But aside from like software stuff like that, we're talking about an entirely new approach from the bottom up using what at a high level looks like GCN all over again. And I was like looking mm -hmm. over these charts, talking to somebody about this from the very bottom and how 
like the instructions are actually processed, the the width of the instruction set, like how many clock cycles things take. Uh, a lot of things have been doubled. Uh, actual instructions are taking less time, fewer clock cycles to get through. So it's a lot much is is a very very efficient uh, architecture from the very bottom, and what we saw with some of the internal benchmarks from this because AMD was showing a few slides that showed like this new Radeon RX 5700 XT versus a Vega 56, and they're showing you know pretty substantial gains, like up to 30% better performance than a 56. So my first thought is, okay, this is a card that if they're showing it versus their own Vega 56, it probably isn't going to beat a Vega 64. Or if it does, it won't beat it by very much. And then they showed the Radeon RX 5700, the non-XT version. And that they were comparing against a uh, RTX 2060 as a 1440p gaming solution. And it was beating the in their benchmarks with their settings and their choices of games, which was pretty a, a good selection of games, including some NVIDIA friendly titles. And it was consistently beating the RTX 2060. So seeing these numbers and hearing some of the specifications, because these are very highly clocked cards, they're not using right. the full... 64 CUs, if they are even limited to that anymore. This was a 40 CU part and then a, uh, with the 5700 XT and then with the 5700, I believe it is a 32 C CU part. Yeah. So, or 36. So you're at a total of 2,560 streaming processors with the XT and 2,304 streaming processors with the non-XT version, and high clock speeds. Base clock speed on the reference card for the XT is 1,605 megahertz, and clocks on the non-XT card are 1,465. They're introducing a new term, which is confusing for these, the way they, they handle boost clocks, because we're used to this with, with both AMD and NVIDIA, and NVIDIA just calls it uh, base and boost, basically. And the boost clock is kind of the beginning with NVIDIA. They they do things a little bit differently, and it starts at whatever they list. So if the boost clock is mm. 1,800 megahertz, you can pretty much expect spikes of up to 2 gigahertz or above with their current architecture on the NVIDIA side. And with really good cooling and a very good card and maybe a little bit of an overclock, you can consistently push it one, 200, maybe more megahertz higher than its advertised boost clock. But what AMD is, is advertising is a, a real world game clock, as they're calling it. And AMD's game clock is what you should average while playing real games for extended periods of time. So they are advertising a game clock for the XT of 1755 megahertz. So that's 150 megahertz above base. And with the Radeon RX 5700, they're advertising a, a game clock of 1625. So that's, a, you know, another, I think it's 160 megahertz above base, if I'm doing my math correctly. So on mm -hmm. top of this, they have what's called a boost clock. So that's instantly a bit confusing because now you're looking at, okay, base, game, and then boost. And boost is more like on the workstation card, what they would call peak. And with... Radeon 7, they had a peak clock, like the workstation cards, and now they're calling that boost. So we were kind of all staring while we were having this explained to us. I am personally on board with them calling it a base clock, a boost clock, and then a peak clock, like with you know Radeon 7. Right. But they want to brand it a game clock, and you could see speeds of up to 1905 megahertz out of a 5700 XT reference card without doing anything under shorter workloads. So shorter benchmarks absolutely will be running at that high speed. So you might have some artificially high benchmark numbers. But for longer workloads, you will start to see the same drops you see with an NVIDIA card where over time uh, you hit power limits or you hit thermal limits, which is most of the time you'll hit a thermal limit before you really hit a power delivery limit. And right. that's where you're going to get like settled down into your game clock. So 
the the pricing though is kind of where these well, I, it was going to be the most interesting part to me. We already knew Navi was going to launch as a mid-range part because that's what AMD said. That they had the Radeon right. 7 as a high-end enthusiast part already. That, you know, 7 nanometer is is a, like a new process for them. They're they're building a new architecture. They weren't going to come out with the ultra high-end card first on Navi. They were going to start in the middle and then eventually work their way up. And the pricing on these for the 5700 XT they announced at $449. So for a card that internally they show winning some and losing some against the RTX 2070, which is a list 499 part, you can argue mm -hmm. that this is still a good value because it's $50 below the list price of NVIDIA's part and can trade blows with it. It won't win every game, but especially games that are optimized for Radeon hardware, you can get just as good of an experience. And then they're also trying to showcase the features you get with the Radeon software and some of the en enhancements that are coming.